tiptoe footsteps We began to climb Near how far we have reached across our mind From cut below God, Mercedes, Bahamas and Basai From our halls we walk their rise Achievements and awards now we prize Join us and we'll show you the greatness of SSU Summer State University Soaring high with excellence Seat of innovation We'll build and serve the nation Summer State University It's the best for you and me Your future and dreams come alive So come Summer State University Our footsteps, we began to climb. Near how far we have reached across our mind. From Cut Baloga, Mercedes, Bahamas, and Basai. From our halls, we walk their rides. Achievements and awards now we prize. Join us and we'll show you the greatness of SSU. Soaring high with excellence Seat of innovation We'll build and serve the nation Summer State University It's the best for you and me Your future and dreams come alive So come on To Summer State University Summer State University Once upon a time, a turtle and a rabbit had an argument about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with a race. The turtle and the rabbit both agreed on a route and started off the race. The rabbit shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. Then, seeing he was far ahead of the turtle, he thought he'd sit under a tree for some time and relax before continuing the race. He sat under the tree and soon fell asleep. The turtle, plodding on, overtook him and soon finished the race. Emerging as the undisputed champ, the rabbit woke up and realized that he'd lost the race. The moral of the story is that slow and steady wins the race. This is the version of the story that we've all grown up with. But, 
our version of the story continues. The rabbit was disappointed at losing the race, and he did some thinking. He realized that he'd lost the race only because he had been overconfident, careless, and lax. If he had not taken things for granted, there's no way the turtle could have beaten him. So, he challenged the turtle to another race. The turtle agreed. This time, the rabbit went all out and ran without stopping from start to finish. He won by several miles. The moral of the story? Fast and consistent will always beat the slow and steady. It's good to be slow and steady, but it's better to be fast and reliable. But the story doesn't end here. The turtle did some thinking this time and realized that there's no way he can beat the rabbit in a race the way it was currently formatted. He thought for a while and then challenged the rabbit to another race, but on a slightly different route. The rabbit agreed. The turtle and rabbit started off. In keeping with his self-made commitment to be consistently fast, the rabbit took off and ran at top speed until he came to a broad river. The finishing line was a couple of kilometers on the other side of the river. The rabbit sat there, wondering what to do. In the meantime, the turtle trundled along, got into the river, swam to the opposite bank, continued walking, and finished the race. The moral of the story? First, identify your core competency and then change the playing field to suit your core competency. The story still hasn't ended. The turtle and rabbit by this time had become pretty good friends and they did some thinking together. Both realized that the last race could have been run much better. So, the turtle and rabbit decided to do the last race again, but to run as a team this time. They started off and this time the rabbit carried the turtle till the riverbank. There the turtle took over and swam across with the rabbit on his back. On the opposite bank the rabbit again carried the turtle and they reached the finishing line together. Both the turtle and rabbit felt a greater sense of satisfaction than they'd felt earlier. The moral of the story? It's good to be individually brilliant and to have strong core competencies, but Unless you're able to work in a team and harness each other's core competencies, you'll always perform below par because there will always be situations at which you'll do poorly and someone else does well. Teamwork is mainly about situational leadership, letting the person with the relevant core competency for a situation take leadership. And that is the end of the story. footsteps we began to climb near how far we have reached across some hour from cut below god never said it but on us and beside from our homes we walk their rise achievements and awards now we prize join us and we'll show you the greatness of SSU Soaring high with excellence Seat of innovation We'll build and serve the nation Summer State University It's the best for you and me Your future and dreams come alive So come on To Summer State University Summer State University
Taking little footsteps, we began to climb. Near and far, we have reached across the mark. From cut Balogan, Mercedes, Bahamas, and Basai. From our homes, we walk the rails. Achievements and awards now we prize. Join us and we'll show you the greatness of. Summer State University, soaring high with excellence. Seat of innovation, we'll build and serve the nation. Summer State University, it's the best for you and me. Your future and dreams come alive. So call. To Summer State University. Summer State University. So come on. To Summer State University. Steps, we began to climb. Near and far, we have reached across the mark. From Cut Baloga, Mercedes, Bahamas, and Basai. From our homes, we walk the rails. Achievements and awards now we prize. Join us and we'll show you the greatness of SSU. Soaring high with excellence, seat of innovation, we'll build and serve the nation. Summer State University, it's the best for you and me. Your future and dreams come alive. So come on to Summer State University. Summer State University. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, so while we are preparing for our activity for this afternoon, magi-games kita. Okay la po ba, Aton? Pwede po pakipindot ni Dahan ay magkunhan approve kung okay po kita mag-game. Tapos ikikiin la po ni Yoan ang iyo answer.
Sorry. Okay. Sali may daka may daka mo nakikita dida. Igigess la po niyo and place. Ah, uh, using ini nga mga emoji nga correct. Makaka-claim po ya hin 20 pesos nga load. So ikikiin la po niyo didto ha. Chat box. Okay? So start na kita. So number 1 ta. No, stop. Okay, can you answer in the chat box? Kita Andrea kung anon kor anon anon nila. Okay. May mga answers na. So check Mr. natin. Mr. Samuel na. Kabatingan answered Kalookan. Okay, sige. So let's check kung correct ni your answer for number one. Okay, the answer is Bulacan. Correct ni your answer, Bulacan? Correct answer, Angelo Dorotan. Okay, so Angelo, congratulations. Please key in your number in the chat box so that we can send to you the 20 pesos load. Congratulations. Ang tapos na po, pwede po uh, di rin na mag-answer or di na sumagot sa chat box. Ibigay naman po natin sa iba. Okay, Andrea, kindly take note of the number, of the CP number. Okay, so let's proceed to the next one. Five winners la kita ha. Directly message the the number to me, SWDS Andrea, Mr. Angelo Duroten. Thank you. Nabalik ko. Anay, bumalik. Okay, for a while, ha? Kay bumalik kay after this one. Ready for the second second round? Okay, key in your answer. May answer na. Okay. Anay, kaya nag-ano hiya? <laughs> nag-move. <laughs> For a while, ha? Kaya nag-move on PowerPoint the next nga. Anay, ha? For a while. Nag-play kasi an osa. And I have for a while, naghanga na akong laptop. Ang saya. And I have for a while, for a while. Naka, okay, ha, for a while.
Napindot ko eh. Makati ba ito? Ah, this is number two, correct? Yes po. Okay, Winner so... is Miss Karen Harata. Okay. Screen sharing ko na stop. Okay, ha, for a while. Nag-PM na si Karen. At yun po, ano ako nito short? So, Ms. Karen Harata, please directly send to me your number. Thank you. Okay, so let's proceed to number three. Nagahang na ako. <laughs> Naghang ako. Sorry. Thank you. Nagahang ako. Bakit? Feeling ko kinahanglan o trohon na lada. Okay, for number three. Okay, Kian, your answer for number three. May answer na, Andrea? Uh, the answers are C. Cebu, Cebu. Correct. So the correct answer is Cebu. Uh, San Victoria. San Victoria is the winner in this round. Okay. So just PM your CP number to Miss Andrea. Okay, so let's proceed to number four.
Okay, so please shout your answer for number four. Answers are B call. B call. First answer is Miss Meneses. Oh, that's the correct answer. Okay. The correct answer is B call. Okay. So, so this would be my winner. Menese. Huh? I sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Ancheta Jessica. Okay. So just PM your CP number to Miss Andrea. Okay, so this is the last one. Then we will start our program, our activity for this afternoon. So this is the last one. So please shut your answer for number five. May answer na dre. Oh, what's the correct answer? Nay. Okay, the correct answer is Batanes. Am I correct? Oh, so we only allow one answer for each item. So I'm sorry, Rexy Gonzaga. But our winner is Minese. Minese Chris, Chris, Christopher. Okay, so congratulations to our five winners for this afternoon. So again, please uh, chat your CP number so that we can load to you the 20 pesos. Okay. Of footsteps, we began to climb. We far, we have reached across some mile. From Cut Baloga, Mercedes, Bahanas, and Basai. From our homes, we walk their rides. Achievements and awards now we prize. Join us, and we'll show you the greatness of SSU. Soaring high with excellence Seat of innovation We'll build and serve the nation Summer State University It's the best for you and me Your future and dreams come alive So come on To Summer State University Summer State University
Kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas.
John Maxwell said that the single biggest way to impact an organization is to focus on leadership development. There is almost no limit to the potential of an organization that recruits good people, raises them. John Maxwell said that the single biggest way to impact an organization is to focus on leadership development. There is almost no limit to the potential of an organization that recruits good people, raises them up as leaders, and continually develops them. Moreover, we understand that it is not enough for a student leaders to decide if they want to be a good leader. Let us remember that a good leader is not something that is inherited. Apparently, students have to work hard consciously on their leadership skills to be the so-called passionate and exemplary leaders. And I am certain that this webinar activity on leadership will help you be the best leader that you can be. To our dynamic university president, Dr. Marilyn Cardoso, our four compassionate vice presidents, directors, deans, speaker, and fellow learners of Summer State University, good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar activity for this afternoon entitled, Striking the Right Balance, Leading versus Managing. And now for the house rules. This virtual activity is going to be amazing as long as everyone follows these simple rules. Number one, please turn off your camera and microphone if it is not needed. Number two, every Zoom participant's name must be in the following format. Family name, first name, and middle initial. 
Example, Santos Juan A. Note that failure to comply will relegate you to the waiting room and not be admitted. Rule number three, for FB Live participants, you may share, tag, or mention your friends to join this FB Live stream, but please refrain from posting unnecessary comments in the comment section. Rule number four, for Zoom participants, questions and clarifications will be entertained after the talk. By then, you may turn on your camera and mic, or you may use the chat box. The moderators will queue if you are already re recognized. Rule na continuation, you may keep but will be entertained after the talk. Rule number five, please stay until the end of the symposium. Rule number six, make sure to fill out correctly the attendance or the evaluation form and answer the questions to secure your certificate of participation. This is an important announcement. Give us three to five days after the webinar to prepare the certificate of participation and it shall be sent to the email you used in the attendance link. Thank you very much. Are you ready for our speaker? On behalf of those who will not be able to join the live stream of the webinar, attendance or the evaluation link will be available until the end of the semester. All right, so this time is the introduction to our speaker for this afternoon's webinar. And may we call on to introduce our speaker, the Director of Student Welfare and Development Services, none other than Dr. May V. Canyal. Yes, good afternoon, our dear students and our viewers from FB Live and in the Zoom. Good afternoon and thank you for participating in this webinar. Okay, for this afternoon, we have our invited speaker. So we have uh, the old Dominic El Badilla. So uh, he finished his master's in public administration in University of the Philippines, Diliman. And, uh, and, and with, uh, in line of his expertise and in leadership career, uh, he was a CEO of Vibrant Asia Leadership. Uh, he was also a consult uh, and into consultancy uh, from 2017 at present. He is the Chief of Staff of Philippines Health Insurance of Corporation from 2018 to 2019. He is the Chief of Staff of the Philippine Sports Commissions in 2017. He's been the head of the Center for the Global Engagement in the La Salle University from 2015 to 2007. He's been the Executive Director of Sea Oil Foundation uh, from 2013 to 2015. He's also been the Associate Director, Policy on Government Relations, Merck Sharp, and in 2012 to 2013. And he's also the Commissioner on National Youth Commission in 2006 to 2010, and the Executive Director and, and direct, uh, of the National Youth Commission Office of the Philippines in 2003 to 2006. So aside from that, he is an expert in leadership course and specialized in accepting leadership fitness of executives. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, to our dear students and our viewers in FB and in Zoom, let us welcome our speaker for this afternoon. We have Raul Dominic Badilia.
Welcome everyone. My name is Dino. You can call me Coach Dino. I am a leadership and executive coach. Thank you for joining me in this seminar. I would like to begin today by uh, asking you some questions. You know, you can answer these questions by uh, raising your hands and you click raise hand on your Zoom screen over here. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask you these questions. First, have you experienced being managed by a bad manager? You led by a bad leader? Click your raise hand. Okay. Okay. Nasagut kina. Have you experienced being managed by a bad manager? Have you been led by a bad leader? Click the yung uh, emotion, or you can answer yes. Okay, next question. Have you experienced, do you wish to learn how to be an effective manager? Do you want to be an effective leader? Yeah? Okay, next question. If you believe that you can strike a balance as a leader and a manager, you can raise your hand. Okay. Okay, looking at all your responses, I can see that uh, most of you are aware of this important challenge that affects all of us. It does not discriminate. All of you can be affected. But the truth is, the good news is that all of you can be a better leader, a better manager, and it starts right here, right now. I'd like to ask you from your memory, do you remember the first time you experienced how it was to be a leader when you were younger? How many people did you talk to? How many people followed you? What did you tell them? What did you ask them to do? I'm sure you have an interesting story to tell. My memory of the first time that I became a leader was when I was 10 years old. I come from a family of eight children, eight children, six boys and two girls. I was number four. So I have four younger siblings after me. It was the first week of summer and I gathered my two younger sisters, Suzette and Pia. Come here, usap tayo. Let's plan, let's start our summer job, our summer business. We will set our tables, and we will sell halo halo. Yan, our favorite summer halo halo. And we did. We saved a few pesos. We bought fruits and milk from the grocery. We set up a small table with all the fruits, glasses, and ice. Wow, beautiful memories. Our street friends give us their coins, and, and as we make them halo halo in their plastic cups, good memories. Life was not complicated then. That was my first experience of leadership. You have your own stories. How did you begin in your walk as a leader, as a manager? It is important to be in touch with how you started. What is your story? Fast forward to uh, five years after I entered the seminary. I saw different leadership styles of so many people. 24 seven, it was a boarding school. Eight years, I was inside those four walls. From first year high school to fourth year in college, as I finished my college degree in philosophy, I was exposed to different kinds of leadership by priests, for mentors, student leaders. As I was in the student council, I was also in the varsity team in basketball and even in football. I learned teamwork and strategy. I saw bad managers. I met bad leaders also. 
And even that, it really propelled me and uh, helped me in my journey as a leader. And I started working government in 2003 at the National Youth Commission. There I experienced full responsibilities of leadership management. I was in charge of operations, the day-to-day -day activities of the National Agency for the Youth. We were running projects and programs for the Filipino youth. I was overseeing programs that were funded with millions of pesos, programs on entrepreneurship, employment, environment, health, education, everything that's related for young people, for Filipino youth. We were sending Filipino young leaders as youth ambassadors to ASEAN countries, to Europe, fully funded by our government. I was in charge of management and operations. There, I encountered management issues, always a tricky situation where you're being measured according to the amount of time that you put and log into your Bundy clock. You can choose to deliver all your output on time and with, with the quality that uh, you can be proud of, or you can sit all day, appear busy and do nothing. I became busy managing people, managing the office, but I got lost along the way. I lost colleagues and friendships in my zeal to become a good manager. I became unpopular as I was busy becoming a good manager. Now let's jump into what is management. Management comes from the etymology of handling, training, or directing a horse. Okay, kabayo. From the 1560, dito nang galing yung manage. The handling or training of a horse, horsemanship, from the old French mariage, horsemanship, from Italian maneggi or manighiera, to handle, to touch, especially to control a horse, which ultimately from the Latin noun, manus. You see, even from its origins, the word manage is referred to handling or directing horse, not humans. So clearly, we are not to manage people. We should manage things. We manage events. We manage funds, operations, programs, not people. The term manage literally implies handling, to manage a house, to manage a theater. Now let's talk about leadership. What is leadership? Leadership comes from the old English letter to guide, you know, to go on oneself, to go with oneself, march at the head of, go before as a guide, company and show the way, to bring forth, to sprout, you know, from the 1590s, someone that goes first. Ikaw mauna, you lead the way. In all these examples, in all this etymology, where those words come from, it gives you a picture of the original meaning of these words. So let's look at the distinction of these two things, leader and manager. The distinction is obvious between leading and managing, even from the definition of the words itself. Leaders are here to guide, influence, inspire. He is the first among equals. He sets the vision. While managers, they direct, they implement things, they run activities, they manage situations, they oversee smooth implementations of projects. You may ask me, coach, they sound the same, they look the same, they seem to do the same things. You're right. It can be confusing. Both are important. Leaders and managers cooperate with each other. They coexist collaboratively. They're important to each other. They need each other so that programs will work. Leaders and managers are important in our organizations. We need both of them so that we can feel safe. We will see harmony, balance, and productivity. Leaders influence by inspiring and enabling through advice and direction. Managers, they provide command, control, 
they organize, they coordinate, and get things done on the ground. With this, you will realize that leaders are the heart of an organization. Managers are the brains of an organization. If you're a manager now, you are the brain of an organization. You have a role to keep thinking, to keep conceptualizing, to keep implementing. If you're a leader, if you believe you are a leader, believe in your heart that you are the heart of an organization. If you find someone who is a good leader and a good manager, keep him. Keep him, he's a good catch. Essentially, leadership means inspiring a movement to come together for a common goal. If you're a leader, you motivate and work with your people to keep them strongly bonded, committed to move and achieve your targets despite storms, difficult times. As a leader, you provide the what. What is your goal? What is your purpose? What is your mission? What will keep you, all of you together? What will keep you motivated and successful? What will keep you motivated? Ask yourself if you are the leader. As managers, you are the brains, the brains of an organization. You think of solutions, you design systems, you create rules, operating procedures. You are the think tank. You conceptualize and set up the programs. Management is about the system, the setup, not the people. As a manager, you ask yourself these questions. How can I implement the goals? How can I reach the targets? How do we translate our purpose, our mission? How can I design the structure and systems? How do I operationalize our incentives program? How do I conduct assessments and evaluations? Let's talk about RASI framework this management leadership goals. RASI stands for responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. This framework basically simplifies the role of each person in an organization. Tell me which of these are managers, which of these are leaders. Responsible he is the recommender. He does the work defined and delegated by an accountable person. Siya yung nagtatrabaho doon sa mismong lamesa. Gagawin, paano to gagawin? Paano ko to didesign? Those who do the work to complete the task, there's at least one role with a participation type of responsible. Although others can be delegated to assist in the work required. So, as responsible, in this framework, ikaw talaga yung gumagawa, ikaw yung nagtatawag, ikaw yung kumakausap. Pag sinabi ng boss na kailangan ko tong papel na to, kailangan ko tong report nito sa, sa biyernes, ikaw yun. Ginagawa mo yun. You are the responsible. Next, the accountable. The accountable, he is also the approver for the final approving authority. He is answerable for correct and thorough completion of deliverables or task. This could be a manager as well. The manager can be overseeing a unit of people, a unit of other assistant managers. But when it comes to that unit, he is accountable for that unit. He's the one ultimately answerable for the correct and thorough completion of the deliverable or task. He's the one who ensures the prerequisites of the task and that they are met. He delegates the work to those responsible. In other words, an accountable must sign off or approve work that responsible provides. Silang dalawa, responsible reports to accountable. There must be only one accountable specified for each task or deliverable. 
Now let's go to the next letter, consultant. Consultant provides input and advice. Siya yung nagbibigay ng, ng uh, ideas, siya yung nagbibigay ng counsel, siya nagbibigay ng mga inputs. Ibig sabihin, he may not be the person responsible, he may not be the person accountable, but he provides advice. And he can receive advice as well. So there's two-way communication. Finally, letter I, inform. He is kept up to date on progress. He is often only on completion of the task to deliverable. Cha, most probably, is the chairman of the board or the CEO who is always an informed of what's happening in the team. Note, the accountable person may answer to a higher approving or commissioning authority that delegates the task or project to that accountable person. Rasi, <coughs> excuse me, Rasi applies within the task or project. I know you have questions, you have clarifications, we will have some time for that later on. <coughs> so, having discussed this, these roles are critical as you establish and manage and grow your organizations, it is important that you see where your place is. Kailangan alam mo kung saan ka lulugar, saan ka upo, paano ka position, so that when you know your role, you know that this is your bounds, this is your scope, this is your level of authority. You have to respect each of the roles that are in your organization, I have seen organizations fall apart. They were run by bad leaders, inefficient managers. Where are you in the framework? What role do you perform? Are you the responsible, the accountable? Are you the consultant or the informed? Remember this, your role is important. No matter how small, no matter how big, no matter how you think it's insignificant, your role is important. When you see your place, when you do your part, your role, you will achieve plenty, plenty of things. You will be productive. You will build trust in your team. You will influence your team to be productive and cohesive. Your boss will trust you. He will depend on you. And you can get promoted. This man, Peter Drucker, is world-renowned for his innovative thinking in the ways of business management. Sabi niya, management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. In his book, The Practice of Management, he established the management practice, which is called MBO. MBO, Management by Objectives. MBO measures the performance of employees as compared to typical standards for the job. The belief is that if employees help determine those standards, they will be more likely to fulfill them. So if you're a part of the crafting and designing of your goals, the objectives and action plans, you are invested into the objectives and you're most likely to achieve them. Why? Because you're invested to it. You have ownership of the ideas. You have ownership of the plans, of the results. Great investment, great ownership greater accountability. You can strike a balance. You see, every season and situation is a challenge to become the kind of leader, the kind of manager that your people deserves. The most important component here are the people that you lead. You want to win as an organization, you take care of your people. You want to achieve your organization uh, goals and objectives, Look after your people. You want to build an organization that will stand to last, invest on your people. Your people are the most important component in the equation of your organization. That's why there are so many organizations that when they gather, they talk about how they can lead their people, how they can take care of their needs, how can, how can they be protected from this pandemic, how can they be better and productive because the people are the most important component of your organization. 
not the figures, not the numbers, not the structure. Everyone in the organization is important, but most importantly are the people. Leadership guru, John Maxwell, put it so clearly. People do not care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Leadership is mostly about showing people that you have their best interest. Our history is filled with leaders from generations of various backgrounds. You see, we have military leaders. They came out from the battlefields and they demanded obedience, loyalty, as their subordinates followed them. Also, we have CEOs, tycoons, billionaires who belong to the breed of running their corporations with different sets of styles and vision. Also today, we see leaders who see the need to express the heart of the team. They lead from their faith, from their hearts, compassion, and love. They raise leaders using encouragement, inspiration, and direction. They recognize the power of words and use them wisely to build, establish, and institutionalize. My question for you is, who are the leaders that inspire you right now? You can type it down on the chat box. Who are the leaders that inspire you? Are they your teachers? Are they your student leaders? Are they movie stars, celebrities, YouTubers? Who are the leaders that inspire you? Are they your parents? Does the president inspire you? Does the vice president inspire you? Does the senators inspire you? Does your mayor, your governor, your counselors, do they inspire you? Next year is going to be a big part of the next six years of our lives, the next three years of our lives. Who are the people that you want to lead you? I will tell you that your vote, your decision is so important that it will affect lives. Some people don't care about other people. They just get the vote buying uh, cash and then they just follow whatever is written in the sample ballot. You can be different. You can vote from your heart, from your informed decisions, and choose the right people who deserves to be there. We are a democracy. We will follow the majority. But even then, you have a responsibility to follow the right leaders. We're not just looking for the best managers. We're looking for the best leaders, the best managers who will look after us. Pag nakikita natin na yumayaman na sila sa posisyon, Let's ask ourselves, karapat dapat ba talaga sila? Pag nakikita natin na bago sila na upo dyan, eh, nagpayaman na sila at uh, ginamit nila opisina nila para magpayaman, let's ask ourselves, do they deserve to lead us? Many times we get confused. Many times we don't know where to start. We can begin here. We can start now. Here are five things that leaders and managers focus on every day. Number one, always keep your composure. No matter the scenario, the drama, the activity, always speak respectfully, reasonably, and with dignity. You want people to respect you, you show them that you have self-respect. They will listen to you, all the time, if you show them respect and you have self-respect. Always become in the midst of noise and panic. Have a sound mind and calm disposition. Consider all possible scenarios, options and responses, make a decision and act accordingly. Number one, say it. 
always keep your composure. Number two, show confidence and uh, it will inspire trust and respect. Even in the midst of hopelessness, failure, or achievement, you show confidence and courage in every situation. Your people will support you. And when they see that your words are comforting, precise, inclusive, and they see that your actions, your nonverbal messages are consistent, they will stand beside you, behind you, all the way. I assure you that. Show confidence in each of your people. It will encourage them to do the same to each other. Your example is so important. When you speak, speak your messages in a clear and straightforward manner. It will assure your people that you have clear thinking, that you are considerate and sensitive. When you are clear, your people will feel confident about themselves. As a leader, when you are clear and confident about your messages, your people will trust you and follow you. Ask your people these questions. How are you doing? How can I support your efforts? Number three, it is not your ability, not your ability. It is your availability. Kahit napakagaling mo, kung lagi ka namang wala. Kahit napakatalino mo at napakagaling mong tao, pero hindi ka makontak. Pag tinatawagan ka, hindi ka sumasagot. At kung sumagot ka, mga tatlong buwan, mga tatlong taon bago ka sumagot. I'm exaggerating things because as a leader, as a manager, you have to be accessible. Be proactive with your team. Show them that you genuinely support their efforts. As a staff, you can be focused on delivering your individual output. But when you become a manager, when you become a leader, you become accountable for the people entrusted under your team. Be accessible. Be available for your team. You build trust when people feel that you're approachable and available. Move and visit your team. Your presence behind their desks will encourage them. Your extra time spent to meet with them individually in Zoom, they will feel supported. They will feel that you care. They will feel that uh, you listen to them and that they will speak and that they will trust you. Next. Prioritize one-on-one -on -one meetings. In this day and age, as good leaders, you shall be measured according to effective performance management. Establish a habit to meet with your individual team members. As you ask them about their progress, you help them focus on the bigger organizational goals. They will feel engaged and connected to the team and the organization vision. When you meet with your team, ask them these questions. What keeps you busy these days? How is your progress lately? What resources do you need so that you can achieve your targets? Next, be a lifelong learner. Real leaders, real managers know that there is so much to learn and improve upon themselves. Listen to feedback from those people you trust. They can help you become better in specific areas of leadership and management. When you listen to feedback about you, how people see you and perceive you, expect to be uncomfortable in the situation. But know this, you will become wiser. You'll become more humble when you open your mind and your heart to feedback. Be comfortable with criticism. You cannot be ocean, onion skin. Bawal ang pikon. Roll with the punches. Diligence and hard work will help you earn the trust and credibility from those you need. You need mentors and coaches to sharpen your skills and challenge you to be in speed and altitude with your winning attitude. As you learn and keep learning, you build an arsenal of skills that will lead you to achieving your highest potential 
your biggest dream. And character is the cornerstone of leadership because it is the first stone laid. Everything else that the leader is or does is built on his character. So strong character promotes strong leadership. Likewise, weak character promotes weak leadership. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher who greatly influenced Christian theology, including physics, biology, zoology, logic, ethics, poetry, theater, music, psychology, economics, politics, and government. Lahat na halos. Aristotle called courage as the first of human qualities, the first virtue, because it makes all of the other virtues possible. Courage is the most important human virtue. It is the most important business virtue as well. As leaders and managers, you make important and unpopular decisions. Leadership takes courage. Do you want to build business? Starting a business and running it takes courage. Do you want to finish your college education? Do you want to take further studies, master's or PhD? It is difficult and yet it's worth it. It takes courage. Do you want to be in a relationship? Do you want to meet your forever, a lasting relationship? It takes courage. Traditional wisdom will tell you that courage and bravery is not for everyone. I will tell you this, courage is available for all of you. You can learn it. You have the capacity to be brave, to be courageous, to be a leader, to be a good manager. Every situation is an invitation to courage. Leadership and management are two important skills that every person needs to have, needs to balance, needs to master, to become effective in any endeavor, any pursuit, any accomplishment and challenge. When you have courage and you are guided by this virtue to lead people, manage things, serve people, and support them achieving their greatest potential, you are being true to your purpose. You are being true to your mission. You honor yourself. You honor your family. You honor the people who believe in you. You honor the people you love. You honor the God who created you, the author of your life, the giver of your courage. On a final note, I want to ask you this question and leave you with this question. What can you do right now to be a person of character, a person of courage? Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Coach Dino Badilla. Once again, thank you for sharing a comprehensive discussion or the webinar activity on managing versus leadership. So I am certain, of course, that you have learned, we have learned something, most especially our fellow student leaders, my fellow student leaders. I am sure that they have learned many things about leadership and management. And of course, without courage, anything is possible. And without a good attitude towards leadership, it is not possible to be a good leader. Thank you so much once again, Coach Dino, for sharing your expertise on leadership and management. So at this point in time is the awarding of certific certificate of Certificate of Recognition and on behalf of Engineer Maria Lourdes Amante, the Vice President of Student Affairs and Services, we have Dr. May V. Canyal to administer the awarding of Certificate of Recognition, the Director of Student Welfare and Development Services.
Dr. May. Okay, so, uh, prior to the distribution, uh, to the giving of certificate, we would like to ask those who are in the Zoom, if you have questions and those who are in the FB page, you can key in your uh, questions uh, and pwede po natin yan siyang itanong mamaya sa ating speaker. So for those in the Zoom, you can also chat your questions. So after we, dis, uh, we give the certificate or after reading the certificate, we can entertain your questions. Okay? So on behalf of the Vice President of Student Affairs, uh, Ma'am Lourdes Amante, I would like to give this certificate of recognition, <coughs> excuse me, to Mr. Raul Dominic Badilia in grateful recognition for imparting his valuable insight and expertise and expertise and dedication for accepting our invitation to become the speaker of this webinar. So given this 28th day of 2021 at Summer State University, signed by our university president, Marilyn D. Cardoso. Again, Coach Dino, thank you so much for this opportunity that you have given to us. So for those who have questions in... In the chat box, or if you still have questions, uh, you can chat your questions in the chat box. And for those in the FB Live, uh, just key in also your questions in the FB page. Yes, for those in the Zoom, you have questions. You can turn on your mic and on your camera. Or you can raise your hand so that we can recognize you. May tanong po ba tayo, yung mga nandito sa Zoom? Just turn on for your camera and your mic. Yes. My question po. Mr. Laurelia is raising his hand, ma'am. Okay, okay, Mr. Laurelia. I think he has a question. How about you, Juju, my questions, ka? So far, ma'am, I don't have any questions regarding the discussion being discussed by our speaker because everything was clear so far. None so far. How about any other? How about those student leaders who are here in Zoom? Do you have any questions to our erudite speaker? All right, there is a question. I think this is came from the Facebook Live. What to do if you were led by a bad leader? It was sent by Clarice Joy Clavel. What to do if you were led by a bad leader? Okay, thank you for the question. Bad leaders, sometimes, do not know that they're bad leaders. And it will take for you consequences and circumstances to discover and to realize that you are in a situation where you are following bad leadership. 
couple of things we can do is uh, first of all to acknowledge that you can do something about it. You can do something about it. Many of us, when uh, we are in situations that uh, that uh, we feel trapped. Pakiramdam natin, wala na ako magagawa. Nandito na ako, panindigan ko na. Yung palang leader niyo, eh, nagnanakaw o nag, uh, nag, uh, nagsisinungaling or would, would do unethical things na hindi, hindi mo matanggap dahil it goes against your values. Una sa lahat, kailangan mong tanggapin that you can do something about it. Diba? Kaya nga, pinag-usapan natin dito yung courage. Leadership is about courage. Ikaw, while you follow a leader, you have a choice. Always, you have a choice. To be brave, to take courage, to say and make a decision. If something is wrong, you say, this is not acceptable. I cannot follow this leader anymore. Ayaw mo ng gulo, then go quietly. Hindi mo kailangan gumawa ng eksena. Mag-post ka pa sa Facebook, i-announce mo pa sa buong mundo na ayaw mo na sa taong to at sisirain mo pa siya dahil pakiramdam mo, sinira ka o nasaktan ka o anything like that. We don't have to broadcast our emotional downturn. Hindi natin kailangan yun. In fact, it can do more harm than good. Baka mapahama ka pa. So, una sa lahat, tanggapin mo na you can do something. Pangalawa, talk to somebody you trust who will help you take steps so that you can move out of that situation. There are people in your house. There are people in your school. There are people in the student services that uh, you can actually consult. People who have integrity, people na mapagkakatiwalaan, na hindi ka mapapahama. Talk to them. Approach them. We have two people here that I know. Si uh, Dr. Uh, May Smile. Si Joji, nandito. Kagalang-galang. Talagang uh, mapagkakatiwalaan. Pwedeng utangan. <laughs> Walang ipapautang, sir. Okay. Walang interest daw. So... Pwede mong, pwede mong lapitan sila. Talk to them and with confidentiality, consult them and ask their thoughts and kung anong masasabi nila. At the end of the conversation, you will have to make that brave decision. Ikaw magdi-decision, hindi sila. They'll give you advice, they'll give you suggestions, they'll give you ideas. Pero pagkatapos ng usapan nyo, the challenge is on you. Anong gagawin mo? You make a decision to stop the friendship, to stop the relationship, to, bad, to, to let go of that kind of uh, working relationship. You make a decision. It takes courage to say no. But many times, the word no is a loving word. Diba? Kung alam mo mapapahamak ka, you say no. Kung alam mo mapapahamak yung ibang tao, you say no. And there are consequences kapag nagbingi-bingihan ka, nagbulag-bulagan ka, and you just ignore the signs. Always, you will see signs. Kasi may mata ka. May tenga ka. Mararamdaman mo if something is wrong. Pag na-sense mo na merong something dito, merong nangyayari na hindi ko gusto, nararamdaman ko na hindi tama, then, That's the time you trust your senses and then talk to somebody that you can get advice, good advice, and so that you can make a decision. Number three, in certain situations, I do not know the context of your question, but I would assume that in this situation, if you can handle the leader, the bad leader, and if you can talk to this leader and find out the reasons 
At ganun yung patakbo niya, ganun yung style ng leadership niya. Get the entire picture. Kasi minsan naman, akala mo lang bad leader siya. So get the context. Anong sitwasyon ang pinag-uusapan natin dito? Anong uh, behavior, decision na ginawa niya na sa tingin mo hindi tama? Which made you think that he is a bad leader? Nanakit ba siya? Nagsalita ba siya ng disrespectful? May ginawa ba siya na sa tingin mo hindi mo kayang tanggapin? And these are actions, these are things that uh, go against your values. Remember this. When you are strong with your values, you will attract the right people. When your values are in place, alam mo na ito ang importante sa'yo. Importante sa'yo yung tuwala. Importante sa'yo yung respeto. Importante sa'yo yung pakikipagkapwa. At, uh, at paggagalang sa, sa nakakatanda, sa authorities. You will attract the kind of people na ganun din. At pag may nakita ka na akala mo, Ganon siya, yun pala hindi. Mararamdaman mo agad. And you will stand by your values because yun ang mas importante than any of this. Huwag po kayo manghinayang if you have to let go of people. Sa tamang panahon, pag talagang tinakda that you were meant to be friends, pwede naman. You may not have to work well now, di kayo pwede mag-usap ang trabaho ngayon kasi meron conflict, pero pwede naman kayo maging magkaibigan. Baka pwede mo siyang kakilala. Pero pagdating sa pagkatrabaho, pag merong pagkakaiba yung leadership style ninyo, then you will have to respect na ganun siya Hindi mo kailangan i-hate yung tao, hindi mo kailangan sirain yung tao dahil sinaktan ka, hindi mo kailangan patulan yun. Diba? Sinasabi natin kanina na pag pumatol ka, pag napikon ka, talo ka. Because makikita eh, malalaman nila napikon ka, malalaman nila kung paano ka magalit. Hindi alam na nila kung anong weakness mo. So never show your weakness, never show your soft spot. Because when you do, alam na nila paano kasaktan. So as a leader, be strong with your values. Be strong with your goals so that you will only work with the right people, the people who will also contribute to your dreams, to your goals, and thus will make you a better person, a better leader. Maraming salamat. Okay, thank, thank you so you. much, Coach. Uh, so there is a question from the Zoom. So how to deal with difficult leader? How to deal with difficult leader? Difficult leaders are plenty out there. They are called many names. One strong description of a difficult leader is diminishing. Diminishing. You can look for the meaning of this. It is one of those descriptions of difficult and complicated and toxic leaders, diminishers. They're the ones who cause stress in your life. They're the ones who uh, make your life difficult. Sila yung bida palagi, sila yung epal palagi, sila, sila lang. The world exists to make them feel better. The world owes them para sila yung laging nasa kalagitnaan, the center of everybody's attention. Difficult leaders are plenty around us. You want to deal with them? I tell you, don't deal with them. They're difficult to deal with. Do you want to handle them? Good luck. I will tell you, 
stay away from difficult leaders. They will make your life difficult. I have worked with them. Marami na ako nakilalang ganun. The first sign of difficulties, the first sign of complications, the first sign of toxicity with these people, I consulted the people who know them and, and, and tried to find out for myself. Anong leadership style niya? Ano ba talagang style niya? Ano ba talagang gusto niya? Anong purpose niya sa buhay? Kinikilala ko siya. And if talagang hindi siya pwede magbago, I cannot change him. I have control over myself. I can change the way I relate to the person. And kapag talagang they will cost you so much stress, they will cost you so much poison in your life, you make a decision. If that's the kind of environment, that's the kind of friendship, the kind of uh, relationship you want to keep. Because unti unti, your values will be compromised. Your energy is slowly diminishing. And unti unti, ikaw mismo, nararamdaman mo na you're losing yourself. Mawawala ka na sa discounting. You're losing your path. Why? You're diminished. Somebody's destroying your, your spirit. So difficult people, don't deal with them. Stay away from them. Run away from them. Only work with people that you know will bring out your best. Who will have your best interest in their heart. Ikaw din, for your self-protection, self-preservation, for your peace of mind, you will have better opportunities outside this kind of uh, cooperation with this difficult person. Thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, how should we deal with people who always disagree with everything we suggest? Wow. Oh nga, no? Talagang may ganun? So somebody... Uh, It's also a description of somebody who's difficult. And many times we find ourselves in similar situations na kailangan natin makipagtrabaho sa kanila. We have to work with them. And while we work with them, and uh, while we work with them, it's a... Uh, it's a challenge to, to uh, prove ourselves. Now we can actually become uh, an ally instead of somebody who's, who's uh, uh, there to be in opposition. Uh, I would like to suggest that in such situations, always find a common ground. Always find an area of common agreement. Bago kayo mag-meeting, bago kayo mag-usap, establish common ground. Establish mo muna areas where you agree. Because sa simula pa lang, kung wala lang kayo pag agreean is it worth it? Is it worth pursuing? Kung nag-disagree siya, maraming ganon. Many people, they listen to you so that they can respond to you, they can react to you. Maraming ganun. They're really not open to your ideas. They're not open to your suggestions. All they want is to prove themselves better. They're more correct. They have better ideas. And you are less. You are nobody. So, given na yun, kailangan natin tanggapin yun. Uh, you make a decision. Do you want to work with this person? You can choose. You can choose to ask the work with them. And my first suggestion was find a common ground. Finding common ground is building rapport. 
Ano yung pinagkaka-agreean yun sa simula pa lang? Sa simula ng meeting, importante, when you preside the meeting, importante na you always talk about the purpose of the organization. The purpose of the meeting. And then see how they see it. Mapapansin mo naman sa Zoom, lalo na sa Zoom, makikita mo kung ayaw magpakita, ayaw magparabdam, hindi interesado, yung energy level mababa. So kung minsan, baka hindi naman ikaw. Baka hindi naman ikaw yung issue niya. Baka ang issue niya, yung nanay niya. At uh, doon siya nagbubuhos ng sama ng loob niya. Sino yung pwede niyang kontrahin dahil wala siya makontra sa bahay. Hindi niya makontra yung, yung uh, girlfriend niya. Kukontrahin na kayo. And all of those things. And many times, you bear the brunt. Ikaw yung nagsasuffer. The productivity suffers. Everybody suffers. So when you see that this issue is is uh, stalling and so delayed because disagree and disagree, then maybe it's not something that uh, is worth pursuing dahil kontra ng kontra. You can ask him the question, so what do you want? What will make you agree? Anong gusto mong mangyari? Ayaw mo dito o anong gusto mo? Hindi ka dito payag o oh, sige, anong magpapapayag sa'yo? Anong pinakamaganda mong idea? You know, sometimes when you ask them that question, wala naman sila masabi. Dahil they devote their time and their energy to prove you wrong, to prove you wrong, to prove you bad. So ako, I tell my teams, Make sure when you say that you disagree with this idea, make sure you have a better idea. If you don't, you can uh, shut up. Dahil <laughs> lahat tayo dito nag-iisip, lahat tayo merong oras na kailangan uh, siguraduhin na hindi masayang. So hindi tayo pwedeng paikot-ikot. Hindi tayo pwedeng Ikaw yung mas magaling. Eh. Ano ba yung alam mo? Ano ba yung galing mo na mas magaling na idea? So it's a challenge being in organizations. But it's, an, it's, an, it's an even bigger challenge if you're not the leader. So, the first basic step is to take courage. Find your voice, then speak your mind. And then slowly from there, you take, you build confidence that you're able to also share your ideas. Minsan, yung ideas mo hindi matatanggap, pero at least you're beginning to build courage and confidence to speak up your mind. Thank you. Thank you. So the next question is, are leaders born or made? They are born and they are made. They are both. Many leaders have genetics from their blood. They're really leaders from the very beginning. And there are those na galing sa pamilya na because of experiences, because of failures, because of their ambition, because of their hard work, they become leaders. Marami tayong kwentong naririnig tungkol sa ganun na tao. And they're, they're born. They're made. Ang mahalaga, hindi yung nakaraan. Ang mahalaga yung ngayon at yung bukas. Kasi pwedeng isipin mo na hindi naman ako galing sa mayaman na pamilya o pamilya na may pangalan. Apelido ko, hindi naman ganun taganda. But you see, you can design your path. You can change things. Hindi naman lahat ng mayayaman, mayaman ang nagsimula. Many of them, they were born poor. But they made a name for themselves. Itignan mo yung halimbawa ni Barack Obama. Wala naman eh. Wala naman siya. Until he made himself 
and crafted his path and be a leader. Nag-aral siya, nag-aral siyang mabuti, nag-desisyo siya mabuti, nakapangasawa siya ng, ng, uh, ng isang tao, nakasinggalin niya, tutulungan siya, susuportahan niya. Even with that decision is, is very important. Choosing your partner is one of the most important decisions you can make. It will break you. It will also build you. So every choice you make now will contribute to your success or your failure. So very important that you make a decision, a decision based on your values, on your aspirations, a decision based on your faith, so that you will find peace. Thank you. Okay, the next question is, how can a leader fail? How can a leader fail? There are a couple of things that are obviously can describe you as a failure. Number one, in businesses, you lost money. You lost people. You lost yourself. That's how you feel. And even in the worst of failures, you can rise up. Kahit anong sabihin ng tao, kahit sabihin nila na wala ka, talo ka, pag naniwala ka sa kanila, talagang talo ka. Pag naniwala ka sa boses mo na narinig mo na wala kang silbi, yung mga boses mo na pag natutulog ka, umiiyak ka na lang kasi wala kang magawa, pakiramdam mo, wala kang magawa dahil pakiramdam mo, failure ka, wala kang magagawa. Those voices, when you listen to them, they become louder and louder and louder. You have to have a voice that will encourage you, a voice that will support you, a voice that will tell you, kaya mo yan. Kahit ano sabihin ng ibang tao, wala yan. Kaya, kaya mo yan. You have to have those voices. Who are those voices? Those are the voices of your teachers. Those are the voices of, your, of, of the people you trust, people who believe in you. These are the voices of, of, uh, of, of coaches, of mentors. Na kahit konti lang alam nila sa iyo because alam nila na meron kang ambition, meron kang pangarap, meron kang aspirations. They will make their, those voices louder so that you will always remember, you will always hear those voices. And when those voices are louder, you can only succeed. But the last, the reason why people fail is because they don't have focus. Kung saan saan sila nakatingin. Merong kamiting, hindi nakatingin sa mata. May interview, hindi nakatingin sa mata. You don't have focus, you don't have contact. There's no urgency. Okay lang, bukas na yan. You don't have momentum. Kailangan mong gawin, mamaya na yan. Kakamamaya mo, mawawala yung moment. Mawawala yung pagkakataon. The doors that are open now will not, will not be always open for you. So when you have a moment, tinawagan ka, call them back. Minessage ka. Importante yung message. Message them back. If it's a leadership issue, resolve it. Talk to people. I shared with you ideas how you can be that person. But you see, all of this will, will be nothing and be worthless if you don't see the signs that uh, you're already feeling. Akala mo, okay lang. Yung pala, kumapalpak ka So you need people around you to check on you and help you and give you feedback. And you will listen to them. You listen to what they're saying. Oh, Joji, may kailangan kang gawin. Joji, naglagay ka ng goal. Kumusta progress mo? Oh, Joji, 
sabi mo, ang goal mo this year, mag enroll ka na sa master's degree mo. Kumusta yung preparations mo doon? Somebody's helping you. Somebody's pushing you. Somebody's encouraging you. How can you fail when you have that kind of support system? Okay, I'll ask you this. Who is that one person in your life who is helping you, talking to you, pushing you, challenging you to reach after your dreams? Sino? Write them down in your chat box. Kung hirap ka, naisulat yung pangalan ng taong yun, malamang. Hindi malinaw na siya yun. Hindi malinaw na merong tumutulong sa iyo. Lahat ng mayayaman, lahat ng napakagagaling sa mundo, merong tumulong sa kanila. Merong naniwala sa kanila. Ikaw, merong naniniwala sa iyo. Sino yun? Ikaw, merong tumutulong sa iyo ngayon. Sino yun? Magpasalamat ka sa kanila kasi tutulungan ka pa nila. Mamaya, i-text mo siya, i-message mo sila. Magpasalamat ka kasi nandyan sila sa simula pa lang. Hindi naman pwede na mag-text ka lang pag may kailangan ka, di ba? Papasalamat ka palagi. Kasi habang nagpapasalamat ka, lalo silang gaganahan po muna. Lalo silang maglalagay ng oras para tulungan ka. So, you can win. You can become a winner if you're surrounded by winners. There are people who are failures in your life. If you're surrounded by negativity or toxicity of people who are, who are bad leaders, run away. Find people who will help you. Makasabihin mo, Coach, paano yan? Nakatira ako sa bahay ko. Lahat sila negative. Di ba? Buti kung COVID negative, di ba? Di ba? Paano kung COVID positive sila tapos negative pa sila? Di ba? Talagang dead na dead ka na. Double dead ka na. What I'm saying is, you will have to create your situation, design your situation where you can win. You have to put mechanisms in place in your lives, in your future, so that you can win. Alam mo, pag nanalo ka, hindi lang naman ikaw ang nananalo. Nananalo ang pamilya mo. Nananalo yung mga anak mo, yung magiging asawa mo, yung magiging pamilya mo, yung, yung mga tao na mahal mo, mananalo sila if you win. So, create your situations where you can win. Thank you. Uh, does having too many leaders in a group be a good thing or bringing them together would eventually backfire? Again, again, ma'am? Does having too many leaders in a group be a good thing or bringing them together would eventually backfire? Okay. I wish I have more context more information to see the context. I am very comfortable with working with other leaders. That's my experience. Each leader has a skill. Each leader has their strengths. Each leader has their contribution if they're part of a team. What's important is each of the leaders are confident that they will work, that they will synergize that they will harmonize all their ideas, their leadership styles, so that they can achieve one purpose. If all the leaders are not aligned, if the many leaders you have in your team are not aligned in their thinking, are not one in their vision, in their purpose, you're right, it will backfire. Instead of having so many leaders who are assets, you will have leaders who are asses. Sorry about that. It's a pun. But seriously, 
you don't be you don't want to be in a situation na lahat sila magagaling at walang gustong magpakumbaba wala nang nakikinig dahil lahat gusto pakinggan you have to be realistic you have a goal get the goal working to your advantage so that you can win together mahirap yung lahat sila magagaling lahat gustong pakinggan hindi sila bil- masyado silang bilib sa sarili nila na hindi kayo nagkakaisa. Mahirap na magtrabaho kapag hindi mo kasundo yung tao. So, importante yung magkakilala, importante yung magkataibigan, at merong tiwala sa bawat isa. Tandaan natin, yung mga purpose natin, yung mga goals natin, should serve everybody. Should serve the purpose of the team. So kung meron kayong magandang goal, kailangan lahat kayo naniniwala dun sa goal na yun, sa purpose na yun. Kahit anong level of leadership mo, mataas, pababa, sa tingin mo magaling ka, okay lang yun. Okay lang yun. At kailangan, you'll be ready to work with other leaders. Because what's the use of your skill if nobody wants to work with you? If people are moving away and they're backstabbing you kasi ayoko makatrabaho yan masyadong masyadong you know all of you should be assets all of you should be an advantage for each other yung kainan niya kalakasan niya yung kalakasan niya kainan niya and tanggapin natin na meron tayong pagkakataon na mapag-isa lahat ng galing at talino natin because total isang team tayo, isang grupo tayo. Let your differences be your advantage. Thank you. Another question, what are the most important values you demonstrate as an effective leader? Okay. First of all, the first value that's a uh, I can name a few things. I know you, you can have more. First value is integrity. Kailangan yung salita mo, gawa mo. Yung sinasabi mo, ginagawa mo. Anong tinuturo mo, you live it. Mahirap yung you call yourself this and yet you don't do this. Integrity. Kahit walang nakatingin, gagawa ka ng tama. Kahit walang tao, Magsasalita ka ng maayos. Respeto. Respect. Honor and respect. Importante yun sa grupo. Kahit napakagagaling nyo, napakaganda ng ideas nyo, but you don't respect each other. It's nothing. It's nothing. Next is character. Character is uh, what makes strong leaders. Kung anong pinanggagalingan mo. Ano yung pinakatotoo sa pagkatao mo. It's so easy to spot character. Pag mapagkakatiwalaan mo siya, alam mo may, tam- may maayos sa karakter niya. Kung may takot sa Diyos, that's a good start. Kung nagdadasal, that's a good start. Those are good signals. May respeto sa mahirap, magalang magsalita, may respeto yung magulang, maayos sa pangangatawan, maayos sa sarili, malinis sa katawan. Alam mo meron siyang respeto. Those are obvious ways to, to observe respect, honor and respect. Kasi yung tao na may respeto sa sarili, mayroong respeto yun sa kapwa. Yung malakas magmura, malakas manira ng ibang tao, ang pinanggagalingan nun, yung respeto niya sa sarili niya, hindi ganun katakas. Kasi sa ibang tao, binabastos sa ibang tao. Saan galing yun? mababarintin niya sarili niya. And how can you work with that kind of person kung mababarispeto sa sarili niya? So, there are so many other things like courage, influence, teamwork, hard work, and discipline. Marami. I can name, uh, I named a few because uh, we, we will not have much time. But, uh, I, I am sure 
that in your heart you will know what's the most important uh, values that you know you will need as a leader. All of us will have unique backgrounds. And when you go back to your, to your life, to your experiences, marami kayo makikita na kailangan mo to become an effective leader. Thank you. Oh, next question. How do you monitor the performance of the people that you have to lead? Okay. You monitor the performance of the people you lead based on what they have decided to achieve. Halimbawa, this member from the very beginning have uh, committed to, uh, to accomplish 10 phone calls. Diba? So that's how you assess how are the 10 phone calls. By Friday, some phone calls na gawa niya. So you will assess the quality of those 10 calls. Kasi pwedeng tinawagan nga niya, pero hindi naman niya nakuha yung kailangan niya ma-achieve dun sa phone call. So you assess people based on what they have decided to achieve. Thank you. Don't know if it's uh, related to our topic, but let's uh, just consider these questions. Uh, it might something to do with siguro with the characteristics of the type of community or the type siguro. I don't know if it can reflect to the type of leadership. Uh, uh, what if you resign but still give uh, bad feedback on your new application, most especially background checking? Um, again, again. Sorry. Uh, what if you resign from a certain company and still that company still give bad feed, feedback on your new application, most especially on background checking? Okay. There are companies who are who are doing this, and you be careful when you apply for these companies. I would suggest that uh, when you are in that company, in, in your current situation, your current company, make sure to build good relations with the HR, with your immediate boss. And the, the, the pinaka boss, because they're the ones that uh, Will, will matter one day when you leave the company. Paglipat mo sa kabilang opisina, magtatanong sila, saan ka galing? Saan opisina ka galing? Sino yung boss ko dati? So kung maayos ka doon sa boss mo, maayos yung bitaw niyang salita about you. So, I'm trying to understand the context of your question. There are companies that are vindictive because companies are run by people and people are not perfect. So, kung meron kang masamang ginawa doon, you can expect that they will say bad things about you. They will say, wag mong tanggapin yan. Nawala niyan yung pera namin na pinagkatiwala sa kanya. But you can, what? Can you expect? Ganun na experience sila sa'yo. So, alagaan mo yung reputation mo. Alagaan mo yung performance mo. Make sure that you are always very satisfactory. Make sure that you're always outstanding in your output. And that you're, you're not burning bridges pag alis ka. Na tipong magsulian tayo ng kandila. Salbahe kayo, salbahe rin ako. That's not how it works out there. The industry is just very small. Everyone knows each other. Pag nalaman nila, nalilipat yan, galing yun sa bangkong ganito, sige, tanimin natin. Kasi di naman nila malalaman agad yung pagkatao mo until they ask the former boss. Diba? So they ask around. And that's where you'll have to protect yourself from being badmouthed by anyone by giving them good performance. Work performance 
is undeniable. Kahit pa meron ka nakaaway, kahit pa meron kang nakasagutan, pero yung work performance mo napakaganda, yung work performance mo palaging babalikan. Ano ba yung na-deliver niya in 2020? Ano ba yung natrabaho niya in the last three months? Work performance. Kahit sabihin nila na ah, may, na, ano yan, may nakasagutan yan, ah, may naka, uh, laging late yan, ganyan. Pero pag yung work performance mo maganda, output mo napakaganda, it will stand on its own. You will have a strong advantage. Thank you. Thank you so much. So wala na siguro. Ah, there is still pahabol na tanong. What if you have a member who does not participate or a freeloader? How will you talk to him or her in a way that he or she won't get offended and make you sound bossy? Okay. Freeloaders. Freeloaders abound. <laughs> <laughs> Pagkadaming freeloaders sa mundo. Yung uh, mahilig sa libre, mahilig sa magpapalibre, tapos pag uh, magpapatulong ka, nawawala, hindi sumasagot. Pag mayroong party, laging nandyan. Pag mayroong libre, ang bilis. Pero pag siya na yung aasahan, nawawala. Kailangan mong tanggapin ganun sila. If you want peace of mind, don't deal with them. It's not your job to change them. You're not God. You cannot change them. My suggestion is make one effort, one effort to reach out. In that one effort, Make it your purpose not to change him. Make it your purpose to just ask. Just ask. Ask a couple of questions. What is their plan for their lives? Anong plano nila sa buhay? You know their answer. Wala silang plano. Mahirap tulungan yung tao na ayaw tulungan yung sarili nila. You can ask the follow-up question. Ano pwede namin matulong sa'yo? Those two questions is sufficient. Nagtanong ka, nangumusta ka, at nag-offer ka. Ngayon, di pa rin niya alam or meron siya ibang sagot, you go from there. Because gusto mo naman tumulong eh. Sino naman ba ang tao na ayaw tumulong? Pero kung yung taong tutulungan mo, ayaw naman patulong. Yung taong gusto mong tulungan, eh, ayaw naman niyang mapaayos yung buhay niya. It's not your job to be, you know, to change lives in that way. We are not, you know, superheroes in that context that we will transform lives in, in ways that are beyond our powers. Your role as a student, be the best student. You have a, you're a son, you're a daughter, be a good daughter, be a good son, be the best brother and sister. You're an employee right now, you're working, you're a VA, be the best in that situation. Honor God with your work, with your life, and Right now, sipin mo muna how you can be productive, how you can be a better person. You reach out to people, two questions lang. Two questions that I gave you. Those are two examples. After that, bitaw ka na, let go. Because you don't need toxicity in your life. You don't need to be so bothered and so affected by people who are Freeloaders who are there to, to suck out your energy and, and discourage you. You don't need that. You need to be surrounded by people who will support you, who will guide you, who will challenge you. Ngayon, kung wala yung mga tao yun, 
very challenging situation. Napakahirap lang. But even the most difficult situations, people succeed. You will succeed. Even if napapaligiran ka naman ganun tayo, you will succeed. One day, you will have a breakthrough. You will find the person who will help you, who will challenge you, who will bring out your best. Huwag mong sayangin. Give it your best shot. Make a decision. Take courage. Because your path is something that's ahead of you. Yung nangyari kahapon, yung nangyari last year, yung nangyari 10 years ago, wala ka na mababago doon. Hindi mo na mababago yun. Kahit sino may kasalanan, kahit kasalanan nila, kahit sinaktan ka nila, wala ka na magagawa doon. Ang magagawa mo ngayon, sa sarili mo. What can you change now? What can you change tomorrow? What can you be five days, five weeks, five months from now? That is something within your power. It's up to you. Do you want to be bothered by freeloaders? You make a decision. You want to be successful? You can do it. You can be successful. You want to be the best son? You want to be the best student? You can be. That's up to you. You make the decision. Take courage. You can do anything if you put your heart and mind into it. Everybody is here to help you. The uh, student services will be here. They are open. They're providing this platform. They will help you. They are openly scouting and looking for people who can help you. Now, you make a response. You respond to the challenge. What can you do so that you can be better? What can you do so that you can respond to this challenge, to all this input? Because you have that capacity. You have, you have the kind of power to change the course of your life. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Coach Dino. Okay, may questions pa po or wala na? So kung wala na po tayong questions before we end this webinar, uh, we, uh, we are thankful for those who are in the Zoom and for those who are watching us in FB Live. We still have part two sessions of this leadership training and part three session. So for part two, it will be on October 6, 2021, which is taking risks and failing forward. Our part three is Unleashing the Leader in You, as scheduled on December 1, 2021. So all those remaining talks will still be with Coach Dino. Okay, another, there's an invitation from Coach Dino if you are interested uh, for this May in celebration of the 2021 ICF International Coaching Week. So they have a special pro bono coaching sessions and leadership seminars for professionals, especially for those who are here na gusto nyo lang mag-attend. So it would be on May 17, 20, uh, May 17 to 23, tama po ba kuya? So, uh, limited slots only, we have shared the link, the registration link in SSUSWDS page if you are interested to join the 3D seminar workshop. Mga ilang slots po ba? Coach Dino, ang baka dumami siya kasi nakashare na po siya sa FB Live, ah, sa FB page ng SWDS, tapos shinare na rin po namin siya sa Gadwit School ng Summer State University para po sa mga student namin who are willing to attend. Okay? So, yes, Juji? Final note before we end? Alright, thank you so much. Okay, so at this point is the multimedia presentation of SSU March and SSU Jingle. Thank you so much, Coach Dino, for answering the questions of our fellow students here listening and watching to our webinar today. And I hope um, this will not be the last webinar that we have for Summer State University. Thank you so much, Coach. po after po the him uh, after the SSU March so that we can take pictures for screenshots for those who are in the Zoom. Tough
footsteps we began to climb Near how far we have reached across the mar From Katbaloga and Mercedes, Bahanas and Basai From our halls we walk their rails Achievements and awards now we prize Join us and we'll show you the greatness of SSU We'll build and serve the nation Summer State University It's the best for you and me Your future and dreams come alive So come on To Summer State University Pwede po pa unang camera natin. Okay, three slides po tayo. Okay. Jacob, ready na? Ready? Okay. Hino mag-screenshot? Anay, one, at the count of three, ha? Jake. Yeah. One, two, three, smile. Okay, next. Okay. Uh, mayroon pa po ibang hindi naka-open. So, one, two, three, smile. Okay, next. Smile. One, two, three, smile. Okay na, Jacob? Sige, screenshot na. Sa last. Okay na? Okay. We still have webinar po on May 5 uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, two different topics po. One is in relation to juvenile delinquency and in the afternoon we will be talking about topic on 
online uh, resources for online businesses. So if you are interested, po, uh, we will be sending also a link for the registration. Okay. Thank you so much. Coach Dino, thank you so much for the time.